Yeah, yeah, but first, uh, what this, uh, what, what topic uh, do you have in mind? So we, so what's the next one we're doing? The next one we're doing is what it means to be a YouTube maker with some modicum of success, insofar as people who watch your channel think that you're something. I don't know. <laughs> I have a, I have a good one. If if that's not if, if my idea is not too close to that one is is where you sort of want to see um, the typology community headed. Like if you have any ideas as to what we what you want to use typology for more generally, for, for, for example, you know, like research or just applicable use or like programs, you know, whatever. Okay, well, let's talk about that next. Let's do this topic first, yeah? Okay, sounds good. This topic's interesting to me because um, I don't know if you're familiar at all with my story, Eric, but uh, things changed dramatically for me when I quit drinking about three years and I don't know some months ago and uh, prior to that things were dramatically different anyway once I quit drinking I since have started this thing up and got divorced and did all kinds of shit like that you know so it's been it's been a very dramatic change for me I don't know how much that is the case for you or not uh, can you tell me a little bit about how you came to do this stuff and what it, how much it's made things different for you? Uh, I guess I would say that what brought me into doing videos, I've tried making videos many times throughout the years, is uh, uh, my girlfriend, I would say, because uh, she really uh, made me think about what my passion was and what my purpose was. And I had this tendency to just spin around in circles and keep thinking about things forever. And should I do it? Should I not do it? Am I ready to do it? Should I need to study more before I do it? And uh, she made me let go of a little of the perfectionism that kept me from doing videos. And she also... Um, made me because i was starting to go in a completely different direction i was uh, thinking of going into communications work and other more business things but then i decided to follow my passion and uh, that meant really digging into typology and psychology and really trying to make something out of like all the years i spent researching these things and studying these things and wondering about these things uh, I felt like I could do a difference uh, in the typology uh, community, in the military community, because I felt like there were a lot of stereotypes around, and I feel like some of the beliefs people have about the MTI are more limiting and more harmful and le have less to do with uh, personal growth. So I wanted to suggest what should an MTI look like if it allows people to grow and if it, uh, if it lets people go in a positive direction. But should typology look like in the future? That was my initial question that made me start doing videos. So, um, for you then, you got, you experienced success pretty quickly, right? Yeah, my channel started growing. I started really putting up videos there in October, I think. And uh, I feel like I've already hit 2,100 subscribers, and that's really amazing, like, especially the, in the last two months, especially this year, I feel like I've gotten doubled my viewership uh, uh, very quickly. So it's exploded. Watching your videos briefly made me want to try to polish up my my production a little bit. <laughs> because I was like, God damn it. This fucker just started this thing. It's like already like shooting way past <laughs> me. But I don't know, man. I'm an ATP. I just, I just roll how I roll. I just can't seem to muster up the TE to do anything. I'm impressed with you and your TE. You got seven slot TE, right? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it just tends to happen. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's not. I don't think it's necessarily TE. I think it's also FE. Like making these like sort of polished videos, like like thumbnails, editing. You know, like like. Um, I think of Effie in, in the video form as like making like a, like wrapping up a gift. It's like the video is a gift and it's like the Effie is like the wrapping paper. Like, here you go. And I like, I just think it's funny how your channel host Eric is so obviously like run by an ENTP. It's just like, all right, no video schedule upload when I feel like it. And it's about anything like related to typology, <laughs> you know?
It might not even be related to typology. It might be anything. Who knows yeah, it could be you driving your car or something. Yeah. Well, really, I, I think you can make really well with your strategy as well. I've seen a lot of successful variety video bloggers and YouTubers. Uh, it's just harder. It's difficult, more difficult to get a loyal audience, I think, because a lot of people are like, I only want one thing. I only want it in one way, and I only want high yeah. quality. Uh, so in in host Eric, you have you have the um ex like extremely useful community that you've built up for yourself. You know, like like I don't have like I don't have a community. I have a channel. You know, I have a channel. That's it. And you have like this community where we have these like groups, like these rooms where we can go and talk about stuff. Like that's that's the type of stuff we need too. Because like what Eric said is a lot of people make these false stereotypes, and it's hard. Because a lot of times they sort of they're all just in this pool, just like making all these false stereotypes, and no one's really making sure that they're heading in the right direction. So you, you mean provide like group. They're they're doing the whole yeah they're well. We need more pia pia. Just like a green. Need. They, they need a bit more yeah. Hey, that's not actually true. Like you know that's not actually constructive. You know, they need like a, a an expert to like lead them in but that see, direction. That's yeah. such a that's such a what, what quarter are you? Beta, beta quadra. <laughs> you don't need a fucking expert. They need somebody who points out their wrongness. That requires no expertise. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. But I, I mean, I would consider you an expert. Well, you know, you're an expert at least. Well, you're an expert at not only typology, but you're an expert at pointing out these things, even if you're not an expert. I'm an expert at arguing. I, I will concede that. Yeah, you're an expert. I'm an expert at arguing. I am a debate coach. Yeah, exactly. After all. So, I think I think for me this 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 topic is near and dear to my heart because I'm like a censor, right? And like, there's all these like mis, there's all these stereotypes and censors that really just piss me off because I just see all these intuitives come into a group and then just like they have like no censors in their group and they're talking about censors and I'm like, you know, that's not actually how censors operate, right? And like, you don't know that because there are actually no censors in your group with you telling you that. And so I always try to go in and just say these highly antagonistic points to these people, and they usually get kind of annoyed or just like don't respond. Or Let's talk about just... the demon people again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, it's like it's like they just think censors just cannot hold deep and meaningful conversations with other human I'm beings. I'm sorry, I forgot you were a censor. <laughs> Eric, thoughts? <laughs> oh, sorry. Susie, I feel go like. Ahead. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, Susie, then go it's, his, it's his turn to point out the wrongness. Oh, who's yeah, there, Eric? My turn. Oh, oh, your turn to point out the wrongness. Okay. Well, no, everybody Patrick gets a turn. Should. Everybody gets a turn to point yeah, out the wrongness. I'm very egalitarian. Eric, you got any thoughts on all this? I feel like a lot of uh, intuitives come from this. I have the sensor parent, and uh, oh yeah, uh, there you go. I've heard that so many and times. And that's like the most common thing. And I think really a lot of the time they are dealing with not actually sensor parents, but in disillusioned intuitives. You know, older intuitives that have had a lot of ideas when they were young, but that have gradually gotten a little less. Uh, um, uh, a little discouraged over time. So I don't think all of them are actually censors, but I think it's just from the from the young intuitive's perspective, old intuitives appear a lot more conservative. They've ingratiated sensing into their lifestyle as they get older, maybe. And so they're like, okay, I can't just sit around and do intuitive stuff. I have to actually be in the real world. Well, I think that's yeah. a very interesting observation because I used to think my dad was an ENTJ. I became convinced over time that he's probably an ESTJ. Um, you know, pretty different in their displays, uh, but it makes me wonder again. I don't know because he's very much what you just described. Somebody who I think had a lot of ideas when he was younger and and got ground down by, uh, you know, being a good parent and doing his job and shit like that. Yeah, I don't. Uh, there are so many people that say they have an ESFJ mom, and I don't believe that yeah. so many people have had an ESFJ mom. I, yeah, uh, I think the problem is that um, a lot of people, and I did this too, is they they take the test, okay, 
and they have their type, and then they read their type really thoroughly. And so they know very much what their type is, but they don't really spend much time reading every other 15 personality types, and they go off just incredibly um, broad strokes of all these other types. And so they'll take like very, like they'll take things like, oh, I like cooking, and then be like, oh, ESFJ. And and they don't they don't know that like there's a lot more to ESFJs than just they want to be like these homemaker moms you know like it's not actually the case. Well, regardless, I'm pretty confident in my typing of my mother is an ISFJ, and uh, for this for a lot of reasons. I mean, I think the thing is when well, let, I want let me bring it back to topic. So for me. The experience, of course, of making YouTube videos and getting people to watch them and stuff has been one where I got a lot of affirmation and praise and or positive regard. And I entered into the experience of making these things badly in need of that, but so so accustomed to not getting any of it that uh, I didn't even realize how badly I needed it. You know, even though I tried to making shit for probably my for most of my adult life, I was either making shit or I was a drunk avoiding making shit. So, I mean, it was it was a really identity altering experience to to get that need filled and. And then additionally, like Patrick was saying, I have, I, the thing that makes talking with famous people, talking with famous people as far as I'm concerned, are the raw channels that automatically record the conversations that occur in those rooms. And those conversations can be, they range wildly from topic to topic and who knows what people are talking about at any given moment. But um, it affords me a lot of raw material to work with where I can, uh, where I can cut cut highlights from stuff and make little videos out of and stuff like that and I think it gives people a reason to want to participate beyond just uh, a room where people are talking is to know that it's being recorded automatically and uploaded automatically I think it makes a difference anyway being able to be a an individual of significance in that community is really strange for me Really strange and really <laughs> fucking mind blowing. I, I don't even know what to do with it half the time. I feel like you are in some ways the humans of New York of typology in a way because I feel like you give people these chances to come in and talk and share their perspectives and their viewpoints, and you give. Uh, I don't know. You, you you are so much about the community. You really give the community a way to. Uh, be a part of uh, YouTube and everything that's happening. That's a really good NI way of putting it. That's that's a good like marketing slogan or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little a, INFJ a magic example. right there. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing that happened, I think it was three days after I joined first time on camera, I was added to the channel where I could do whatever I wanted to his videos. Mm -hmm. Who does that? <laughs> and ENTP does. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of out of the ordinary. <laughs> yeah. You saw the potential in you. I, I mean, I, just, I did that as a general rule for a long time. Now I've kind of stopped because I feel like Susie's owned the owned the role more than anybody heretofore, for sure. I just want to defer to her about everything now. You know. Yeah, I feel like she did an amazing job in just putting this together and getting us all yeah, here. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Someone did something. If, if if I was running the channel in my Beta Quadra form, I would assign her a title and a position and then construct this like career for her in, in regards <laughs> to this. <laughs> if I tried to compensate her, she'd quit working. Are you trying to hire her, steal her from the channel? I, I well, I'd be, like, I'd be like, though. you are your chief executive video producer and event coordinator, and that's your position, and this is your set of responsibilities. Uh, I, uh, well, like you said, I sent her a t-shirt, look, and look, it, on her at least, it's, it, it, does this look mirror to you guys? Or does it look proper? No, it's me. 
Yeah. Look, you know, it looks good. Yeah. I would say though that you should change the colors a little bit. I'm I'm waiting to get a, a different color scheme other than green and yellow before I buy one. What color scheme do you want? Like maybe blue, blue white or something. Blue and white. Okay. Maybe next t-shirt run. I tell you, one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. You should do this too, Eric. I'm going to give you a little unsolicited advice. Make some t-shirts. T-shirt lines. This. This is how you grow your brand as a YouTube uh, celebrity. I actually have plans for that. Uh, yeah. I want to make some uh, not so much brand t-shirts as uh, t-shirts that kind of challenge the stereotypes about introverts and extroverts. Ooh, I like, like, like little slogans. Like, uh, Yeah, I, I think so. I, I wanted to make one that reinforced one. I wanted to make one for INTP that said, SE Polar, don't expect much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I think I think I think branding is like a very expert feeling type thing and unfortunately I'm very I'm not bad at it. I just never do it because I'm never energized by by branding and marketing and stuff. And so my channel, I make the videos, I make the like framework for the Patreon, all that stuff. And I almost like want someone to like do the rest for me, like make my channel like beautiful. Cuz right now like do the my rest freaking for me. channel. That's my favorite. That's my favorite sentence in life. Do the rest for me. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I want like the that's four a hour work. motto. <laughs> Eric, what happened today? What happened? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, uh, him? No, when you were in the car, it sent me that message. Oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go down to Long Beach. I totally forgot about it. But, but it's because I it's because it's like I'm waiting on speed, you know. So it I you know, it's it's prescribed speed and it makes you feel any better. Anyway, um you know, when I'm waiting on speed I'm like, ah, I wanna go get my prescription. <laughs> But but you know I and that, I, and that is the I life that is the life of it, as you can see I'm fairly normal. That's it's just me being I don't know, dude. I smoke a lot of weed too. It probably doesn't help. <laughs> whose video is yeah, this going? Like whose channel is this going on? This video? <laughs> okay, I'm not putting Everywhere. this video on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh, okay. I can hear you again. But yeah, yeah. Um, my channel has my name, Basement Overlord. As it has like a hellscape as the title picture. It has like a demon as the picture. Like my channel is so un fe. I need like an ENFJ or something to like go in and be like, no, this will look better. Yeah, you got to find yourself an ENFJ. All Another right. one. Any, any. To be honest, I don't really feel that good about it. Uh, like my Patreon page, I barely put any effort into anything there. Uh, my YouTube page, I've been like, I just put a picture on there. I've uh, not had any yeah. like interest in the design part of it. I don't have a logo yet. I don't have like anything. It's because so, we don't get paid for this. That's the thing. We we don't get. I mean, I don't know about you. You have two thousand subscribers, but I assume it's not much more than, you know, we do this out of our burning in our burning passion and our desire to improve and unfortunately that doesn't actually uh, afford a career opportunity for me and so I'm like I'll do as much as I want to that's it you know I do it to be cool <laughs> me too I want to like that's the thing that's where my uh, third slot and I comes in I want to make all these like beautifully crafted videos and then just like five years later everyone will be like oh you see that video by Basement Overlord about INTPs versus INTJs? Yeah, great stuff, great stuff. And just like make a name for myself, you know. I don't and that's so easy. It's so easy to do that. Uh, you know, Dave's superpowers, he, all he had to do was like create the fancy, fancy name and uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of like those, those charts. <laughs> Suddenly everyone was talking about it. And when he, I don't know, he just disappeared after. Like, I. He, yeah, um, I won't talk about this for too long, but I actually talked with him one time, and so I mean, he has different plans. He's gonna get back into it. Hmm. He is a sea polar. 
Is he? I thought he was an INTJ or something. Uh, I mean, he's the inferior. <laughs> yeah, I think you said he's INTJ. Hmm. Well, I mean, the thing is, when I when I started this, was around the same time when EJ and D disappeared. He took his channel down. Yeah, same. So there's a void. There's a void there that we had to fill. Well, I was just curious because to to me, he sort of represented the archetype of of YouTube guy goes off the deep end, and it was a bit of a cautionary tale. Like, don't don't end up like EJ R and D. And uh, but of course, Ni Ni inferior. That's the problem. Ni inferior, and um, Fi polar. <laughs> What a yeah. disaster. What I a mean, disaster. You, I mean, can't, I, you can't tell the truth from fiction at all. For every every dozen ideas you have an execute, you check one of them to see if it's a good idea. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, and fear and I, you said it right. I mean, I relate to him. I, I think I relate to him in some level, obviously not nearly as much, but... His, all of his emotional explosions, I think, are very, like, lower down NI plus FE. It's just, like, it's just, like, you 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 don't know how to, like, deal with the present moment emotionally or something like that. I don't know. He never learned to smoke enough weed. Eric, thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't even drink. I don't do anything. YouTube is my kick. <laughs> it's your drug. <laughs> well, Eric, that's very wholesome of you. And we approve of not doing drugs, too. We don't disapprove of not doing drugs. Um, we do disapprove of going crazy like EJ R&D. So don't think that you can jump out in front of cars and survive because God will pluck you from the traffic and and whisk you magically away into safety. If you start saying those sort yeah, of things, it, what's that? He didn't do that, right? He didn't do it. He made those claims. And then he inspired people to do it. No, <laughs> he didn't actually do that. <laughs> no, he made those sort of no, but... claims like, no, I'm, I'm God's friend. And in fact, I'm so afraid that friend. if I were to jump in front of cars, God would stop the cars and or pluck me away from danger. So it's preserved my well-being. Oh, topic. Well, this is on topic. This is on topic about being a YouTube person. Thank you. Thank you. I, th I, th I think it shows the psychological turmoil that comes with being an oh-so-famous typologist. <laughs> I guess that... <they're> <laughs> <laughs> what? You want to up yourself? No, I guess that kidding. sometimes... Uh, uh, I think uh, being on YouTube can test you on a psychological level. I think I at know. least at the beginning, for sure. Uh, it tests how s secure you are, how confident you are, how um, well, how good you are at dealing with uh, conflict, Haters. with uh, stress, with uh, mistakes, and uh, I don't know whatever weird stuff that you I might accidentally say or do, um, and. Uh, with the nervousness, uh, oh, will this video work? Will this not work? Will people hate this? Will people like this? Uh, no. So you do have to balance yourself a lot, I think, to um, manage that. Yeah, and, and a lot of celebrities go off the deep end. I think for me, <laughs> I have two celebrities in every video that I make about the type comparisons. And every video, I make a disclaimer saying that if you don't agree, you can feel free to debate it. Because I know so much that there are so many people with just such strong convictions about certain celebrities' typings that they hold dear to their heart. And so I make very clear that I'm not trying to combat their point of view with my point of view. I'm trying to just say this is my point of view. If you disagree, feel free. Because then that sort of takes the edge off. Because a lot of people... They get really emotionally invested in this stuff. They're like, no, this person is an ENTJ, blah, 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 blah. Here's all these reasons. And if you disagree with me, you're stupid. Like, it's just, you know, 
vitriolic rage in the comments section, and that really gets to you. And so I try to avoid any of that right off the bat before it even happens. And generally, I've been su successful. Usually, I don't get any like hatred on my channel, so I've been pretty happy with that so far. But I only have three hundred. I only have three hundred subscribers, so we'll see what happens. Well, I intentionally got afraid of posting anything about celebrity types. I started doing it only like two weeks ago because uh, up until that point, I thought. I should probably keep this uh, to myself until I, I don't know, can uh, at least defend it as well and uh, can feel more confident about it. Yeah. The theory uh, is think, hard. Like, you can... I think that uh, I get... It's important to get checked, for me, that I get checked in the group a lot. Like, if I do overstep or am presumptuous or make social mistakes, which is where I'm most likely to make mistakes, I will be alerted to that fact in no, in no uncertain terms. I have to be pretty clean in my interactions with others in terms of not making a lot of mistakes because I get schooled if I do make mistakes. I mean, people just fucking school me, you know? So yeah, I, I'm having it's to train even myself. Recorded. And, and it's on tape, right. And they can refer back to it. It's like, remember this time when I fucking schooled the shit out of you, Eric? And it's like, uh, yeah, 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 I remember. <laughs> you know, it keeps you honest, right? I don't, at least I don't have the burden of, that Taylor has. Taylor has the, the mantle of never wrong, which is quite a heavy burden <laughs> to carry, I would imagine. <laughs> I am definitely sometimes wrong. So... You know, but I have a lot of combative discussions in in different. I mean, some well, some of the discussions around here are totally, completely tame and and relaxed, and some of them are quite uh, controversial. Like, there's a certain amount of, I'd say, pushback on the Muslim videos that I make. Uh, I think that uh, you have to dare to be a little sensational sometimes because conflict also makes things more interesting all, all the time. So Yeah, I will say that when my um, subscriber rate tanks, I'm going to start drama with both of you guys so that it gets the pot <laughs> stirring and then people check out my channel and subscribe to me more. That's a tactic that I know is, is, is useful. <laughs> well, you could probably start drama with me. I'm pretty easy to start drama with. I, that's the, thing about, the thing about having so many videos up and having so many different little dramas and stuff is, uh, well, I mean, here's, here's the other thing. I'm, I'm hoping that, that my approach to this whole thing has a long tail payoff. That is to say, with so many people having bits of their lives stored as artificial SI for them, um, as it is for me, that people, when they remember some time after they participated, will look back and go, oh, I want to see that video again. And that over time, the cumulative impact of that will produce uh, good results for me. That's one of my hopes. I don't know. What do you think about that, Eric? Yeah, yeah. It's nice. Uh, everyone loves uh, having journals or for uh, storing things, taking photos of everything they do. It's and it's a need we seem to have. Yeah. I'd like ideally eventually for the for talking to fans people to transcribe every conversation successfully identifying the speaker in each of the uh in each of the <laughs> conversations in the transcription and then automatically tag all the videos and produce a cross indexed library of material that you can reference so you can say like Time that Susie said, and then enter the phrase, and it'll pull up that video in the time slot. That's what it would be ideal. That'd be Magic Sky Friend. I want to look at the video where you kicked me out. <laughs> How did that happen? He pissed me off. <laughs> uh, from my point of view, host Eric was talking about something I didn't want to talk about for a longer period of time than I was willing to uh, tolerate. <laughs> and you got kicked out. And I and I, st I stood my ground and got kicked out. <laughs> and we resolved it without you. Yeah. I don't even remember what it was about. I, I honestly have no recollection of what it was about. That there's a lot well, of drama going on around here. 
Yeah, we can talk about it after the video. <laughs> um, okay, any other thoughts on this stuff? This this has been another rambling, rambling, stumbling, bumbling video here. Uh, Eric, any last thoughts on the matter before we close up shop? You got one more. Yeah, uh, I guess um, I don't think that... Um, I don't consider myself that famous on YouTube at all. I don't think we are at that level. I think... Uh, most people today are a little famous with Facebook and Twitter and whatever. So um, I think it's more like uh, we have a small community. We have a nice, uh, awesome community, really. I feel like I have uh, got an amazing community of like people that uh, share really amazing feedback and thoughts. And everyone is like has been like uh, I I feel like everyone has been so cool. That's uh, like the thing that has been the greatest reward for me. Uh, the thing that kept me making YouTube videos was probably... I, I don't think I intended to keep making YouTube videos, but I think I got... Uh, I, I think I loved all the people reaching out to me, and I think I all the people commenting was what made it really fun. So I think uh, my experiences are very similar to yours in some ways. You shared uh, that the community kind of uh, boosted you to it, and I feel like it's really the same for me, that uh, it's been the community that has been what made YouTube worth it. And... I think right. it's that case for a lot of YouTubers. Right. I agree with you that we certainly are at a very low level of fame. The thing I'm waiting to happen one day, and then it'll make me feel like I have some actual fame, would be for some random person to recognize me in the world. That will be the, the happiest day of my life. When some random person goes, host Eric? And I'll be like, oh, yes, it's me. It's totally me. <laughs> no, like it's not it's pretty much already, I think. What's that? The odds for that, I think, happening is very large is already. I know. Well, I mean, I'm going to, but it's, look, I've got 3,000 some odd videos, and uh, I'm going to keep on pumping them out, and hopefully this thing will grow. You know, I don't know. Eventually, if I talk to enough people in in the world, which I do, like I, like I, I, the number of people that I have on various videos with me is, I don't know, a lot of people over time, and each of those people maybe shows that video to one other person, blah, 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 or something, I don't know, eventually, maybe, then somebody will recognize me, that's my hope, somebody, I've got, if I put the next 20 years into this, <laughs> right, 20 more years of my current growth rate, I'll have almost 10,000 subscribers 20 years from now. And, uh, who knows? Maybe someone will recognize me. That's my question to Basement, uh, Overlord. Uh, what, uh, what is the primary fun you get out of uh, making videos on YouTube so far? What's been the most amazing thing? Um, I started off, um, I had like this incredibly like spiritual two weeks where I just like felt like a totally different person. I just started record. I just re I started recording myself talking. It was just me talking to myself. I wouldn't even upload it. And then a few of them, I was like, hey, I want to upload a few, a few videos of me talking to myself that other people might find useful. So then I up uploaded some like Enneagram videos. And I liked doing that. And then I realized like I wanted more people to see these beautiful things I was like saying or whatever. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to like make videos that people actually care about. So Myers Briggs because I'm interested in that stuff, I'm knowledgeable. And so for me, this whole thing has been like, um, I've liked the idea, it's like it's like me using NI. It's like I like using, I like the idea of turning this into something like greater, like bigger, better, and then like seeing how it like grows over time with something that like I've spent a lot of time researching and finally can like make useful things for people as opposed to just sort of like thinking about this stuff you know yeah i want to say that i think that you need a little of an ego to uh access introvert intuition uh, like you need to have an ego and the ego enough to think that what you're saying is important or valuable otherwise you just sta uh, otherwise it just stays inside you indefinitely like you need a little of that feeling that yeah this is probably valuable i think people might want to hear this yeah, and I definitely struggle a lot with perfectionism. Like, oh, it's not quite right. But the way I see it now is is anything I say, as long as I believe it to be uh, truthful after, like, the three years I've been researching this stuff, 
will there will be some nugget of information that will get um, that that will people find useful, and and maybe the stuff I'm saying isn't always true all the time, but then people can correct me, and and I'll learn from it, and they can learn from it. You know, it's just it's just generating the discussion more. I think. I approached it from the other direction. I started by assuming that nothing that I had to say was any, of any interest at all to anybody, and that liberated me. And then eventually, when I determined that that if I tried harder, that people cared a little bit, then I tried harder. But uh, I, that, that's to me the way that I was able to start making them at all was to make no limitations for myself on quality or anything like that. My first videos that I uploaded were like. Well, I wonder. I sit there and think on camera for like a minute, and I go, "Nah." <laughs> you know, I mean, just painfully unwatchable videos of me just thinking out loud. So the thing was, I needed to liberate myself in that regard. I needed to make make a rule that said I can upload whatever I want because. I, why I'm doing this because I need to get shit off of my chest. And so, and then eventually I started trying harder because I realized, oh, you mean I could actually get people to watch these? I mean, it actually, YouTube does what it's supposed to do to some extent. If you have a good video, it'll promote it and stuff. Oh, I'll try, I guess, somewhat, some of the time. As best I can, which isn't very good, but it's okay. <laughs> You know, you can't I got a comment the day from uh, one person saying, like, you took so long to get to the point that my mind wandered off, dot, dot, dot. And I was like, <laughs> I've one, one of my that. first videos I ever posted, and I was like, yeah, I can get that. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've gotten that, too. Um, I think uh, I think you have to see those points as valid. You have to see those points as valid and not personal attacks and just be like, yes, I can see how someone would have gotten bored. My audience, my intended audience is people who won't get bored. So I'm going to keep focusing on them, you know. Well, the thing is, uh, it's important for me to be able to distinguish between people who are motivated by actually telling me something that bugged them or people who are motivated by like hating and shit. And it's yeah. really pretty easy to tell. But there's yeah. certain, there's certain kind of NTP comment that is super passive aggressively hatey, and I I like to try to dig into those ones a little bit. People people are I think hesitant to come at me in the comments a little bit in general. I think I've policed them pretty well. Okay, well let's bring this video to a close. It's been very nice chatting with Eric, Thor, Patrick, and Susie. Do you have any comments? I, you, you haven't really chimed in much before I end this. I'm sorry to have not involved you more actively. <laughs> no, it's fine. It just didn't go exactly the way I thought it would. Oh, really? Yeah. How did you think it was It doesn't was matter. Go? Well, I want to know now. <laughs> I, I want to know. And then the, the video is still running. I want to hear. I want to hear what. It, what I know it that like. that that's why I'm saying it later. Uh, God I'm damn it, Susie! It. Now everyone's going to be a cliffhanger. No one's going to get to know. Okay, well we'll, we'll check out part three. Check out part three. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>